Hey, good morning, guys. All right, it's February 20th, so we're going to look at some analysis. I'm on a 45-minute chart, I mean, on Bitcoin. Uh, let's check out, let's look at the liquidations uh, currently right now. Let's see what's going on. All right, so we know, and let me refresh to make sure we got fresh data coming in. <clears throat> okay, so um, on a four-hour time frame we do know that we have sorry about this uh we have a total of 82 percent basically that are short and we know that's going to give us a contrarian um signal uh, for some longs now earlier this morning i did see uh price um it was around 745 ish all right and i made a mental note that this area would be a key liquidity sweep. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking, I was looking for price to break above here to sweep the liquidity here for all the short orders. So if we go back and we look at this, we see that 82%, all right, are short. Well, those 82% that are short that also have all their stop losses sitting up here. Okay. And with majority being short, that means that you're going to have a lot of people who are going to protect themselves. But more importantly, in order for you to get out of your uh, particular short, you have to convert it over into a buy. So are you familiar with any leverage trading derivative markets? With the derivative market, you know that in order for you to close out a short because you believe that price is going to drop all right you have to actually buy it so it's not it's nothing more of a short squeeze all right uh, typically um, in a derivative world we don't really talk too much about short squeezes it's because if you're in a uh, in a traditional market of course you know if you're shorting the market you're borrowing the shares immediately selling and then you're taking the proceeds of that sale and then you're buying back at a, a lower price. However, if the price goes against you, you have to buy it back at a higher price to close back. You got to buy back the same amount of shares that you borrowed, right? Well, you know, the derivative market is a, a little bit different, but it's somewhat, somewhat similar. You know, however, it's the same concept is that all these short orders, they have to close out. So what happens? It becomes a short squeeze and now you have all of this pressure buying pressure coming in because why there's a lot of people getting out of that short and if to get out that short you have to buy it back so you have this massive spike up now we have this big huge retracement that's on a 45 minute candle all right so this is showing that there's a there's some lot of heavy sell pressure in here which is part of the manipulation of the bigger players in the market, which is the institutions or whales, okay? They knew that this was an area where they would want to sell when they would have to, a massive order. Now, we need to pay attention to this candle. We need to see. Now, I'm not in a hurry to just jump in and say, okay, let's go, let's just go short now, All right, We wanna see some more price action, but it do look like we are setting up for, uh, with what we call the classic uh, Bart Simpson hairline pattern, right? Which typically is a bearish pattern. Okay, it's gonna look like, in this whole entire zone, it's gonna look like a the iconic hairline of Bart Simpson, right? And this is nothing but a consolidated zone. And in these zones, you're gonna have these little, look like, 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 you know, false breakouts, you know, um, it looks like, oh, we're going to go bullish. You got to be careful because it's going to be a liquidity sweep and then we can head lower. All right. And these are the areas that we would expect. All right. Price now look. So you have this is a this is this is a, a demand zone. All right. It's not it's not as big, but it, it's considered one. All right. And then we got one right here. This is a demand zone. Okay. Now. I would prefer to do the demand zones on a four hour chart. So let's go ahead, let's go to a four hour. 
All right, so let's now let's change some things up. All right. Now we have a better understanding. So we want to look at this zone right here. And remember, with your demand zones or supply zones, you want to look at the last candle. All right. Before it went, you know, before it left a particular zone. So you see this red candle? We're going to take it from the, the height of that candle to the low of that candle. Because why? This was the, this candle right here blasted out of this zone so this was the last candle so we we take the high and the low of that candle and we drag it across and this becomes a demand zone and you clearly see that it came back and it retested this demand zone to collect any orders all right before it took back off okay now you're going to have a lot of um different types of demand and supply zones on a chart over time it takes a little bit more you know keen eyesight to determine which zone is really, really, truly valid, okay? And, and that just takes time. Sometimes it's difficult, okay? But let's go back down to the lower time frame so we can see that, that Bart Simpson type pattern. And I'm going to pull up the Bart Simpson hairline so you guys can get a look at it. All right. So we see that... We, you, you see the iconic, you know, hairline, right? And as it, you see this right here? That's that liquidity grab, okay? That's that liquidity grab, all right? We, we get down, we get to moving sideways, and eventually, eventually we fall off the, the cliff, so to speak, and we get back down to these levels. Keep in mind, this doesn't mean that this is what's going to, you know, 100% happen, but it's, it's shaping up, all right? You see, you've got some nice bearish pressure coming back into the market. So I'm looking at this in real time. So you notice down here is 9.13 a.m. So we're here. Now, let's go down and let's look at look uh, some the one hour, all right? And what do you notice? So we're still within that hour, okay, on this candle. We still, we got one minute left, but look what happened. There were what? 80% on the one hour were short. And then on some exchanges, it was as high as 95, 98, and then 99 on BitMEX. 99% of people were short. But look what happened. You know, y'all saw earlier, look at this, this liquidity. It went up and it just wiped them out. Okay. It wiped all those, all those, all those players out. It went against them. Okay. Now, it, and, and we still could get something to come back up here and, and sweep again. So this is why I keep uh, preaching about when it comes to understanding liquidity, understanding sentiment. Sentiment is very powerful in trading. Uh, it's so powerful, you really don't want the whole world to know about this. It's because then everybody will start emulating it and then it will be rendered as useless, so to speak. So, even, so if you watch this video, I hope that you get something out of this so that you can understand like, okay, now I see what he's saying. All right. It's all about where is liquidity in order for the market to function. It has to have liquidity. It needs if if, if it needs to buy, it needs more sellers. If it if it needs to sell, it needs more buyers. So you always want to be on the opposite side of where everyone else is. So in this market, if the big boys want to sell. What is the best thing for you to do? You want, if you want to sell, you want to push price a little higher to trap. Okay. You want, you want more people, retail traders are running the market, fear of missing out. Like, oh my God, I'm going to miss, miss, miss. And then now you have enough buyers to where you can start selling. And you do know that institutions, they know that they're not going to be able to fulfill all of their sale orders. This is the reason why we range bound. Okay, look at this. We, we're this is profit. All this is profit taking. They're willing and dealing up here. Okay, so from all the way back here, all right, 
they don't make a lot of money on this, especially if it goes parabolic, like right here. This somewhat parabolic, right? It's just some strong candles, no break in anything. It's really smooth. Well, the problem is the big boys, they're not really making money right here. This is nothing but now potentially, you know, get started, institution get in, and then now it's the now the retails are coming in and starting to carry it a little bit. And then what happens? Let's take some profit. Start taking profit. Let's take profit. Let's take profit. Let's take we're taking, taking, taking. All right. And then what happens? Oh, we're back down into a level where now we want to buy. Okay. Because why? Maybe right here there wasn't enough buy orders to get filled. So now the remaining buy orders are getting filled. So if we could understand this throughout the cycle, you would start to approach the market totally different. And you want to always ask, hey, if I enter right here, am I liquidity? What is the market trying to do? Where is it trying to go? What is happening? You know, we got the halving coming. We got all these things happening. But at the same time, it's a lot of people who just know that right now. And if they know that right now, to me, that is the recipe of a what? A, a, a huge bull trap. Look, look what happened with the ETFs. Everyone is expecting it. And it was like, this is go time. It's going to go to the moon. That was a lie. Well, we did, you know, move up considerably, you know, after the point. But for the most part, those ETFs, a lot of them lost 20, 30, 30% in value on a launch day. Why? Liquidity. They want a lot of people to come to the table that can buy, but you're still not enough to fulfill what they really want. So they sold, all right, and then now they're going to buy back at a lower price and rinse and repeat. Keep that in mind. Everything you do when you're trading, you're trying to find that competitive edge of where is liquidity, what is going on, okay? Now, it used to let us go down a little bit lower to the 30-minute. I think they changed the values on this. And if any of y'all know any other liquidity type or sentiment <clears throat> uh, website, like put it in the comments. Also, like like this video, subscribe to the channel if you're new. All right. So this is where we are. Let's let's see where we are in the 24 hour. All right. So in 24 hour, all right, we're, we're majority of long on a 24 hour. All right. So for, this was uh, what time is it? It's nine. nine uh, all right, so let's do right here. So from 915, yesterday, all, right, all the way to 745 p.m. yesterday, we had this drop. So let's, let's do this. Let's get... Do this all right so this is within the 24 hour period you saw that um majority were long but at the same time we had a what we had a drop we had a drop all right we pushed up we had a nice little pullback and then we we hit some some targets to the upside and when, when i say targets if y'all know me i know i use the fibonacci extension tool a lot so let's do a replay uh, so you guys can see what that would potentially look like all right so we uh got this right here so you can see how we would get our targets to upset so this would be target one target two and then potentially target three uh if we were trading based off of that and then we'll do the same thing for the down downside targets as well too. So I just want to focus on these. All right. 
take that out. Boom. All right. So those targets were hit. All right. We got through the third. I mean, the second one. All right. Well, hold on. Yeah. Uh, we have target one, two, three. All right. And then we got target four up here that's remaining. All right. So let's look at this, right? We're going to do this. All right. So if we start to make a move to the downside, we got target one, two, and it's five targets on this. Let's see if we get down here. See how we got down here. We got four and five. Could these targets be hit? Oh, sure. Yeah. The Bitcoin come back down to 45. Yeah. Why not? All right. Let's don't act like there is a possibility that a black swan event could happen in the markets. So a lot of things happening on the macro, macro level that can affect all these markets and you got to think contrarian that's essentially what you would want because it didn't give a lot of you guys opportunity to reload especially on the altcoins as they start to bleed if we do get some pullback we get a discount all right now look at this we got key levels that price can come back to all right now at the 50 percent we got some some decent levels of market structure all right, but we want to add that 61 percent to get a 46,155 area. This look like the golden ratio area you want to look at, but you got to keep your eyes on this uh, the 70 percent, okay, which is which is a huge uh, fib level as well. That a lot of people don't pay attention to, and that's why I have it in red because it sticks out, but it's very accurate. Now, once again, I'm not saying that this is going to automatically go to. 45,216. When we do technical analysis, we're doing, we, we're, we're basically mapping out a potential. And when it, once it cross certain areas, we know. So what we really want to see is we really want to see this 23% violated. And then we want to see price come back above. If it does that, it gives us a higher probability that we possibly at minimum are going to come to this 61%. And don't be amazed that if it if it's a flash, sometimes it can flash down and can do these things. But that's what you have to be careful of. Yeah, I think everybody is looking for the halving. All right, it's it's they all, they're looking at it as oh, it's just a sure bet. Look, guys, the crypto markets are now dominated by drum roll derivatives. All right, this is what this site is all about. All right, it gives you what you need to know about the derivatives. Okay, it's a reason why it says right here in the past 24 hours, 71,209 traders were liquidated. The total liquidations comes in at 199 million. There's a reason why they give you that. This is derivatives. Coinbase is not going to tell you that because they don't they're not doing derivative products like that. So it doesn't matter if, if we are just regular investors. If we're regular investors, we don't care what really the price swings because we're long term. We, we we can we can we can weather the storm. If Bitcoin dropped fifty percent right now, I mean, unless you was trying to focus on short term gains, I, you're not worried. In fact, you're probably happy. You're like, yeah, I could I could allocate more money, especially some people getting tax returns and you know maybe got some bonuses, some things happening. All right, you're like, yeah, man, I, I'm I'm a, I'm a, uh, load up. I got, I got a discount. I got an opportunity. You don't remember what happened in 2020. The people who understood the assignment in 2020, when that event happened, I mean, it, it rocked the nation, but it also provided immense opportunity for so many discounts in the market that a lot of people missed while some of the bigger players in the market were able to take advantage of. With that being said, derivatives markets are keen. Qua 
quad, quadrillion dollars worth of derivative products that are out there. And I'm not making that number up. Okay. So you got to understand the derivative market is very huge. All right. So Investopedia to let you know how large, how big is the derivative market? Right. It's estimated over one quadrillion on the high end. That, guys, that's huge. That's huge derivatives, right? So, you know, and a lot of people don't understand that is one of the reasons why we had a crash in uh, in um during the great the Great Depression. Okay, this is because of excessive leverage. People started borrowing to throw capital into the market because the market was doing very well. And that's what happens when the market is doing very well. People start to borrow so they can put capital in so they can take advantage of it. And it works for the first few who get in. But then it becomes like a pyramid scheme where when you now you run out like, OK, well, now there's not enough buying pressure coming in. And now that these prices are at inflated levels, you're no longer uh, able to sustain that and so you become the last buyer and now price starts to drop and now you have to sell it less than for what you got it and if you hold too too high at the top you're now waiting for someone you're waiting for price to cross your barrier before you can see you know the light of day which is dangerous we want to spend a lot of our activities in areas like down here okay we we want to we want to be able to objectively look at this and say hey if i'm doing any type of buying you know i want to i want to be buying you know in these in these types of areas all right we want to here we want we, we, we want to be buying in these areas, right? We don't want to be buying up here, and that's essentially is what's starting to happen. Start people start coming and buying up here, where if they would have been taking out leverage and loans down in here, it would have been different. But at the same time, you may be thinking that oh we're gonna go lower, so it, it becomes one of those games where you're like man I don't. I don't know. So that's why dollar cost averaging investing is probably one of the safest routes. But when you start to deal with the derivatives, you you have to have a lot of skin in the game. You have to understand how it works, because this move right here, you I mean, if you got in right here on a derivative type of contract and you was thinking that it was going to go up higher. Well, look what happened. You get pulled back. I mean, this is devastating. I mean, because we're looking at a daily chart and it's all crunched up. But this is devastating uh, for someone if you if you held. So let's say you got in right at this point, but then price pulled back. All right. That's 35% drop. That's huge. All right. So consider that. Be patient, all right? Uh, derivatives, leverage can be dangerous. You need to basically, you need to play it smart. But if you're now getting too comfortable and thinking like, oh man, I'm just gonna go heavy, 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 like that is the quickest way for you to get trapped, all right? We gotta look at the, mac the macros. We gotta look at some things that's ruined on the back end that, that a lot of people are unaware of. So we got to be careful. We got to understand that uh, where we currently are. Now, with that being said, <clears throat> we still can go ahead and we can move up. And then a sharp move may just be a uh, just a, a natural pullback before we, you know, we head higher. All right. But I want you to look at this right here. I want you to look at this pattern right here. And let's go on a bigger screen so you can see. All right. So look at this, this pattern over here. All 
All right. And then look at this sort of similar, right? So you see how we, we we're making, we, we're getting up here. All right. We're making our move up. Okay. And then we start to boom, break down. Of course we had this catastrophic event in March. Now look what we're doing now. We're, we're, we're inching up. Can we have another move to get back down to visit some of these areas? You gotta understand, this is one of the most uh, desired assets of our generation. And if a lot of people want it, <clears throat> that means that there's a lot of people who will do whatever they can to try to get that price back down. So you, you, you see what I'm saying? So I'm playing devil's advocate here. Like, what, what does it look like? That if someone wants this, do they want to pay at 52 or would they rather get it down here at 40 or 30 something? So you have to keep that in mind. Now, I'm not saying that some catastrophic event is going to happen again, which could. You know, it's a lot of things. Like I said, it's brewing. We don't know. But we have to be in a position to say, hey, let's have a plan for a fraction of the cost. A lot of you guys can get away with investing in some alts that you don't have to throw the house at. You can just put a few hundred dollars on and it, it, it turned into something beautiful later on. You know, you have assets growing 19,000 percent, some of them going as high as 30,000, you know. What is that? 300 something X, you know, like that, that that's just astronomical. So you got 100 X plays that we recovered. But it's good for you to get in on those levels because you're not a big player. You got to understand, just because you have billion dollar hedge funds don't mean that they can throw a billion dollars in on one play. They don't have liquidity. They don't they don't have it. You can play the liquidity game because you're a small fish in the pond. So you, you don't need that. The bigger you are, the more you have to be sophisticated in how you accumulate your assets. You can't just move seamlessly in and out. Even if your position value was worth two billion dollars, you're not going to realize two billion because at that price point that is worth two billion, it may on paper. If there's only a certain amount of willing buyers at that level that you want to, you might not have two billion dollars worth of sales at that level. And you don't know what order you are in and what we call it the queue. So it's an order flow. So if you have 50,000 investors or other hedge funds that already have their order to execute, let's say, let's use regular $60,000 as an area where, you know, if you if, if it reached 60,000, you have $2 billion of unrealized gains on your balance sheet. And you'll say yourself or your portfolio, you'll say, hey, let's sell it all. You're probably not going to get all six. 60 uh i mean all two billion dollars worth that's because other people at that level may have limit orders as well too they were our first in the queue they're going to get their orders executed you can't just jump the order books all right the order flow book so by the time it gets to you what if there's only 800 million dollars worth of buy-in at that level so therefore you can only sell a partial of 800 something million where you have the remaining 1.2 billion remaining that you that's unsold and guess what if a lot of people start selling this area price is going to continue to drop down so you see how now you have to sell at multiple levels as it's dropping and that's all you see on this, these charts these are just multiple levels of buying or multiple levels of selling 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 all right maybe this is someone up here billions of dollars worth but okay but they can only get a certain amount off why because look look something is not coming back into the market to push this thing up you're selling but it's too many people selling not enough buying pressure to hold this downtrend and so what happens is whoever is buying all down here they're doing a lot of selling up and they're selling in chunks all right little little chunks here 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 okay and they may have got off their last bag and then look what happens all right they're still selling there a lot of people are doing a lot of selling from down here they bought down here but they're doing all that coming off 
Well, a lot of times what retail traders do is they may get out here and what they do is they wait till it gets up to maybe extreme and then they dump their whole entire position. They liquidate everything. Instead of using what we call the tier system where you're selling off 